All right, Blackpool and Lake District, part one. Actually, part several, but the first ones went horribly wrong. When you're adding refraction and you notice Blackpool Tower sinking out of sight off the bottom of the screen, you've done something wrong. What I was doing, it worked beautifully for all the mountains in the Lake District. It's just Blackpool Tower was sinking and Pike of Blisco was calculated too low. Probably I entered the wrong figures somewhere for that one. Looked over it, couldn't see the mistake. I thought... Screw it. Start again from scratch. That's easier than fixing an error. So what I've created is a different approach. The first time through this, I did manage to get a whole load of positions where I would expect things to be in a photograph. And by lining up the, uh, the calculated position of Blackpool Tower deck with the deck in the photograph, and the Scarfell Pike marker with Scarfell Pike in the photograph, I got, sorry, the deck with the deck for the vertical lineup, the Scarfell Pike marker with the Scarfell Pike for the horizontal lineup, having scaled the photograph so that Scarfell Pike to Great End or Pike of Lisco, whichever I used, probably Pike of Lisco, was the correct distance. It lined up Scarfell Pike vertically as well for me, and it lined up Scarfell and the little bits next to it and Great End perfectly as well. So I must have done something mostly right. But Pike of Blisco was wrong. Refraction was getting was being a bit bizarre with the uh, the tower and the roller coaster. And I thought, you know what? I'll start again from scratch. So I've taken a different approach here. Rather than doing it as a uh, a data set, and rather than doing what I did last time, which was to convert polar coordinates relative to prime meridian and equator into polar coordinates relative to the observer's meridian, from that into polar coordinates relative to the observer, and then go to Cartesian. This time I've gone to Cartesian coordinates and then rotated the resultant vector. Anyway, what this does is a whole lot of calculations for you, so you can find, in this case, Skidor. Type in 54.65143 for your latitude and minus 3.5. 14781 for your longitude, and you need an elevation, which is fairly easy to find for peaks in England because you just type in the name and Google knows it. 931 meters. Anyone who says there are no peaks in England above 2,000 feet is quite clearly full of shit because 931 meters is a lot more than 2,000 feet even 709 meters of prominence, which is more than 2,000 feet. Now, we'll do some calculations and that will tell you x and y coordinates in your photograph. Those are actually the tangents of the angles. And you can just repeat this as long as you like. And this, this is from Southport, but you can put in whatever observer location you want. You can even tell it how big the Earth is. If you just press Enter there, it defaults to the correct size. Very nice, very handy. Let's move to a different location. Let's actually, let's use Skidor as our location. Why not? Observe a latitude of 54.65139. Observe a longitude of minus 3.14782. Observe an elevation. Did I say it was 932 meters? Click, click. 931 meters. Well, we'll stand on top of it, so we'll make the camera at 900, kneel on top of it, put the camera at 932 meters. Camera azimuth, we shall be looking due east. And we shall have the camera tilted five degrees down. Then we can go to a target location of Blencathra Summit. Blencathra Summit is 
point six four zero zero four. Actually, if you if you accidentally type this in, it doesn't matter. You just copy that part. It will terminate the first entry at the comma, so it still works. Blancathra summit elevation. Eight hundred and sixty eight meters. So I can put in eight hundred and sixty eight meters and it will now tell me that the summit of Blencathra is slightly to the right. It is an angle right of centre that has a tangent of point one nine nine two six six five six nine. And it is above centre of photograph by an angle an angle that has a tangent of naught point naught seven seven five eight five six five two four. Why the tangent of the angle? Because you're projecting these angles onto a flat plane sensor behind the lens. So the actual pixel coordinate of an object in the image will be proportional to the tangent of the angle, not to the angle itself. For these tiny angles, there's very little difference there. But getting it right is getting it right. So yes. So the first thing we do, mode zero, which is this black and white high resolution for the BBC Micro mode, which gives you uses no memory for color, does use a lot of memory for number of pixels, but still gives you plenty of memory for numbers and things by not bothering with color. Astropolar radius gets it, astropolar radius gets it. If zero, use the actual figure f for each. Ask for the observer's latitude, get that. Longitude can get that. Observe at latitude degrees. Observe at longitude degrees. If it's more than 90, it actually defaults to that obs observation location in Southport. So you can just type in 999 enter, 999 enter, and you will be dropped at that car park in Southport because that's why I bothered creating this program. Elevation doesn't default to anything. It just, you, you can present to, uh, to be effectively standing in the sea wearing weighted belt and boots and a snorkel and mask with the water halfway up the mask. I put in seven meters for the ones I, I was using. Azimuth, the bearing we are looking, again in degrees. Azimuth in radians is the radian equivalent of the azimuth in degrees because BBC works in radians. Camera tilt up, same thing. And then ask for the target. My bad. This program went longer than I realized. Target latitude, target longitude, target elevation. This is converting from degrees to radians for the variables we're actually going to use now. Four, sorry, eight variables. A, B, C, and D for the observer, E, F, G, and H for the target are just these things, which get treated like this to calculate the radius. Everything up to there is the radius at sea level, and then plus observer elevation of the target, the exact same calculation plus target elevation, just with its own variables. Distance from the center of the Earth. F having got that distance, and knowing the latitude and longitude, we can say that the observer's distance, this is very hard to describe in ways that make sense, um, the observer's distance in the direction from the center of the Earth sort of towards Indonesia from a position on the, uh, from, from the plane of the prime meridian and its antimeridian, observer's x-coordinate, is distance from the center of the Earth times the sine of the observer's longitude times the cosine of the observer's latitude. Sine being the obvious one, a certain distance around the equator you would be the radius of the equator times the sine of that angle east. The cosine is the one that gets that starts off at one and gets smaller faster and faster as the angle increases towards 90. Because the farther north or south of the equator you are, the uh, less distance east of it you're going to go by going e a certain angle east. 
Observer Y coordinate. How far West Africa woods the observer is from the center, of the uh, 90 degrees to 90 degree west plane through the center of the Earth. Here's radius times the cosine of the longitude times the cosine of the latitude. Because if you're actually at prime meridian and equator, that's your radius. And the farther you go in any direction from there, the less distance this direction from the center of the Earth you will be. Small angles won't make much difference, but bigger angles like 45, 55 degrees will make more and more this difference. Up to 90 degrees, latitude or longitude, where your distance from that plane is zero. Observer's Z coordinate is the radius times the sine of the latitude. This is how far north, how far north, in fact, yes, how far Polaris woods you are from the equator. Same thing for the target. These are our Cartesian coordinates. As I said, this time, rather than trying to rotate angles, <laughs> which is, which really was ugly, I'm rotating, I'm going straight to Cartesian coordinates, which I just worked out, turning them into vectors, well, using them to generate vectors, and then rotating the vector. Vector A, x, is tx minus ox. It is how far... I think it's 90 degrees west. Brazil? I think Ecuador's further than that. So yes, how far in the direction from the east coast of Brazil to, I guess, somewhere in Thailand or Burma or something? Indonesia-ish. Uh, the target is from the observer. Vector A, Y is how far West Africa from mid-Pacific direction the target is from the observer. Vector A, Z is how far Polaris would the target is from the observer. How far in the direction from Sigma Rectantis to Polaris-ish. So we have a, a vector A, which is from the observer to the target, those three distances in those directions. That's great, but that's still in a, um, that's still in that set of coordinates, that set of axes, that frame of reference, and that's not what we want. We don't want to know how far below the eye level of someone standing at, on a boat at the prime region and the equator and facing Polaris is, is uh, your view is, we want to know how far below your eye level or how far above your eye level it is. So we need, we need to rotate this. Vector B is vector A rotated around the Earth's axis of rotation to put, to make the direction from the axis to the observer's meridian, the y direction. Meaning the observer's uh, longitude is now zero. We're converting from the frame of reference that has Greenwich at zero longitude to a frame of reference that has the observer at zero longitude. Which we do by rotating everything left. Left. Yeah, call it left. Why not? Uh, by the observer's longitude. So the vector B, X, how far to the right of the observer the target is, is how far Indonesia would have the observer the target is in the Earth frame of reference, the uh, prime meridian frame of reference, times the cosine of that longitude, because the more you rotate this, this vector, to change frame of reference, the less that distance is going to matter, minus how far up it was times the sine, because the more you rotate sine of that, that uh, longitude, because the more you rotate it, the more how much farther Pacific to Africa upwards the target is, the more left of the observer the target is going to be in this new frame of reference. The Vector B Y component is similarly worked out, but this, as this is how far this way it is, if there's no rotation, it's still one times that and zero times that. If it's a 90 degree rotation, this becomes irrelevant and it becomes that. 
in between, it's the cosine of the longitude, sorry, it's the how far, if the camera's hovering above the sea near West Africa, it's how far towards the camera it was, times the cosine of the rotor, of how far east of Greenwich the observer was, still is, plus how far Indonesia was, how far to the right from that camera position, uh, the target is than the observer, times the sine of the observer's distance, sorry, angle east of Greenwich. And how far Polaris Woods, the target is from the observer, hasn't changed. Oh, that was good. Punctuation, it matters. Then we want to convert from that to vector C. Vector C is rotating around the prime meridian to rotate the equator down on the North Pole towards the spaceship hovering over. Well, ro rotate the spaceship as well, isn't it? <laughs> West Africa. To put the observer at zero latitude as well, which is effectively the same process, but instead of keeping the Z coordinate the same and rotating it around the Z axis, we're keeping the x coordinate the same and rotating around the x axis. So the y and z coordinates are changing. This now gives me a vector from the observer to the target in a frame of reference where x is due north from the observer plus x, y is straight up from the observer. No, sorry, x is due east from the observer, y is straight from the observer, z is due north from the observer. Right. Having worked out vector c's x, y, and z co co components, I will work out vector c's azimuth, the direction from north, direction clockwise from north, that is the line from observer to target which is an a, a direction that has a tangent of, an angle, so a tangent of, how far t to the right in this frame of reference the target is, divided by how far to the north, how far to the east, good grief, to the right, to the east, target is divided by how far to the north the target is. And I can work out the distance. This is just Pythagoras' theorem, the square root of the sum of the squares of those two components. Knowing the distance, I can say that the vector C's elevation angle has a tangent of how far how far above yes how much farther from the plane through the center of the earth that is level at the observer's location in the direction that is up at the observer's location the target is than the observer divided by the distance along a level plane, along that level plane from the center of the Earth to the point directly below, in the observer's frame of reference, the target. That took more explaining than it took typing. I can then say that the camera azimuth, the uh, azimuth of this target within the camera's field of view, is the actual azimuth minus the camera's azimuth. And the angle of elevation within the camera's field of view is the actual angle of elevation minus the camera's angle of elevation. And it works in radians, which is why you have the R on the end, because that's my radians variable. And then if I wanted to give you the, um, the angles, I would say print deg brackets, those things, to the degrees equivalent of them. Instead, I want where it's going to appear in a photograph, which is some number, depending on your field of view, your magnification, whatever you want to call it, times the tangent of those ang of the angle, which gives you these two. That's your output, and then a very crude BBC basic goes to 220, which is where it asks for the next coordinate. As you saw when I started, I have got a whole lot of them. 
a lot of coordinates for high points and various contour lines. I've used the measure distance function on Google Maps from that, well, from a chosen point near the beach car park at Southport. It may not be where the photographer was, but it's the point I've decided to use. The measure distance line gives you a line of sight from there, and I've used where that measure distance line first touches a particular contour as I swing, swing it across to, s to pick a point on that contour line whose coordinates are in the photograph I want. I can then use those coordinates to plot a whole lot of points in a Google, in a GIMP image, which I'm hoping will match the photograph. I haven't tried yet. Before I do that, I also want a sea surface. And I'm going to create that sea surface by modifying this. Instead of asking for a target elevation and going back to ask for a target latitude, longitude, and elevation, going back after another, I'm going to create a full, a pair of nested for loops, which will just go. Yeah, and this is going to be crude. It's going to be just for Southport. I'm not going to try to make it global. Could do, but it will get complicated. I mean, I could just make it do the whole globe area centered on the observer. But it'll be easier just to make it just this once, just, just for Southport North. Just do a four next loop for lines of dots at sea level and calculate it for each of them. And what that will let me do is plot the actual globe as well in my diagram so you can see what should be below eye level. Bear in mind, so far I have only done geometric, not refracted. I need to go back and run through all of those points again, or points very similar to them. I should have noted all of their coordinates, so I could use the exact same points, but so what? <laughs> to get a refracted version, and then say it'll be somewhere between the two, because you don't know how much refraction there was. But for now, there's the program, and it has given me a whole lot of points to plot which isn't going to be as much fun as writing that was. Slightly more efficient, more streamlined version. It's the exact same code, but all of this stuff, the uh, conversion from degrees to radians, the calculation of those four values, the calculation of the distance from the center of the Earth, and the calculation of the x, y, and z components of the vector from the center of the Earth to the observer are all done before choosing the target so that that doesn't have to get recalculated every single time because that was wasting processor time. The other parts are still done as before. And of course we have the 7.6R refracted version where instead of 6356752 you have 7416211 for the polar radius Instead of 6378137, you have 7441160 for the equatorial radius. And Matt Powell has a giant inflatable banana in his backyard, which he names Dr. Peel. These are figures for the east slope of High Rays, which is well to the north of Pike of Blisco, behind it. But it is a 762 metre bump, which uh, ought to please foe hammer if nobody else couple of things to note, we are already down to an angle with a tangent of 0 0.0063 below eye level. And we're not down to 400 meters above sea level yet. The reason we have a, uh, a larger angle here is that when I put in zero as the angle of elevation of the camera, that is relative to the perpendicular to a line from the center of the Earth, not relative to parallel sea level at the observer's location. And the two are not the same thing. Fleur slightly go on about centrifugal force around the equator should fling us all off if the Earth was spinning on its axis. Well, once per day is very slow, and that's, you know, millimeters per second per second, not the several meters per second per second of gravity. So what you actually get is very slightly lighter at the equator. And if you go 
east around the equator in a plane, the faster you go, the less your weight, the less weight you register on a scale. Mm -hmm. If you go west, the more weight you register on a scale, up to the speed at which your speed through our rotating atmosphere is matching its rate of rotation, which you are flying one orbit per sidereal day west, at which point you reach maximum registered weight, and if you go any faster than that, your weight, registered weight, starts decreasing again because you're actually centrifuging in the opposite direction. That's not what's happening here exactly, but the same effect does mean that perceived gravity, as in the direction perpendicular to sea level where you are standing, is not pointing towards the center of the Earth. So I have taken this angle relative to a line to the center of the Earth as being eye level, rather than a an angle perpendicular to sea level beneath the observer's feet as being eye level, sorry, parallel to sea level below the earth is the observer's feet as being eye level and the two are not the same and the two not being the same actually shows up as this greater angle in each of these y coordinates if you want to work out the difference run the program yourself and get um, any particular target and just compare the angles and it's it's kind of tiny, but it is there, and it is why these angles don't quite match what you'd calculate on a perfect sphere. All right, one more thing. I've removed the mode zero that cleared the screen, so numbers will stay on screen. You can see at the top, default radius, 53 minus 3, 55 minus 4 for the target, elevation 10, target elevation 1,000, Azimuth 355, tilt 5, gives those figures. Let's do the same thing. 53 minus 3, 10. But this time, azimuth 5. Tilt up 5. And 55 minus 4 and 1000. Big change in the left to right, no change in the y coordinate. This is not showing what I wanted to show. I need two targets. My bad. Another target at 55, minus 2, 1,000. Right. Note those two figures. The difference between them is, well, funnily enough, that's one's almost twice the other. That's one plus that. I'm just subtracting a negative number, it's adding the magnitude, gives us the distance between them. 577263. And again, 53 minus 3, 10, 355. 55 minus 4, 1,000, just 1,000, not 10,000. And 55 minus 2, 1,000. Gives me two figures. And again, we have a positive number for the more easterly one. And a negative number for the more westerly ones. We just add the magnitudes to get the, the angle between them. No change. What this means is that 
me having got the camera azimuth slightly wrong, in this case out by 10 degrees, it makes no difference. They're clearly not in the same place in the screen. Are they? Well, yeah, they kind of were very nearly. So let's go again. 53 minus 3, 10. Let's just go 0 and 0. Scary, huh? 55 minus 4. Oh! My 4 key did nothing. So that's at 55, 0. That's 55 minus 4. That's at 55 minus 2. Changed camera tilt. It's now tilted 5 degrees from where it was. But we still have a positive value. The more easterly one at minus 2 longitude. And, and a negative value for the more westerly one at minus 4 longitude because we've been looking between them every time. And if we add the magnitudes, we still get, ooh, look at that. It's gone from 57726 to 57252. It has changed, just not much. So we're getting a little bit of variation there. That's um, half of 1% difference. Just worth knowing that that can happen. Of course, there are other sources of inaccuracy, like I'm only entering figures for wherever I right-clicked on the map. The figures are only to the nearest 10,000th of one degree, which is roughly a meter. Or is it roughly 11 meters? Am I roughly 11 meters, 111 kilometers to the degree? Oh. Of course, that's in latitude. If the longitude is just as that is to the same number of figures in degrees, it's considerably smaller this far north, but never mind. Also, the very big source of inaccuracy that Google Maps ain't all that precise. There are places where it has a 760 meter contour, and there's an, then there's an 803 meter peak. There is no 780 or 800 meter contour shown. The peak is marked somewhere near where the summit is, like within about 500 meters most of the time. But the exact summit, not necessarily true. And when you go back and forth between satellite and map, sometimes stuff moves around. So you can't use the satellite to find either, even if it is obvious. And in places, the contour lines go right through lakes. Generally speaking, lake surfaces Mm, pretty close to level. 20 meter interval contour lines shouldn't be going through the middle of them. So the model used may not be entirely accurate. Also in places I've just been guessing at the altitude of a pass because I couldn't be bothered opening yet another tab to open Bing Maps at the same time as Google Maps to go <laughs> look at the Ordnance Survey and try to find out exactly what that hill's really called and exactly how high that pass really is. So a few of my figures ain't all that Precise. Most of them I've looked up. Uh, turbine tops. I don't know how tall those turbines are. I've just given them an arbitrary 50 meters of height. And so on. But I have my numbers. It is time to draw the refracted drawing. And then I get to see how closely it matches the photograph. Woohoo!